He's 83, you're 19. Correct. So did you think that you would be having sex with Hugh Hefner that night? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ari, and today we're going to discuss the topic, which is the life behind the scenes of the Playboy Mansion. Now, a lot of you guys who grew up with MTV and everything else back then know about the Kendra, Holly, and Bridget trio that was surrounding um, Hugh Hefner, the owner of Playboy. He himself sees um, his image as the epitome of the Playboy, who's always surrounded by beautiful young females. Now, this created a very much uh, media buzz back then, but also a lot of admiration for men and even women that got being with him and living in that mansion represented a beautiful lifestyle of accomplishment, luxury, extravagancy, and all the benefits on top. These twins that I'm about to show you are the Shannon twins that both were in 2010, 2008 from 2010, the girlfriends, youngest girlfriends even, younger than Kendra, of Hugh Hefner. And because they're twins, they got more media attention because, you know, he added something new to his drive. These girls have come up front and are now talking about the experiences as a girlfriend of Hugh Hefner and also how it was to live in that mansion and also more traumatic um, experiences that we're about to witness. So stay tuned and let's go. Let me just put it right here. We're getting introduced to the twins. I think the best way to do this is to just talk about how you got there to begin with and a little bit about your background. Tell me about your childhood and, and how you grew up and where you grew up. We were three months premature. We were born in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Our biological mom was never involved in our lives. We didn't even get to really know our father. He was very abusive. We always think to ourselves, we were born into this life together because we knew we were gonna need each other. That's so sweet and that's- So broken um, childhood. That's really- that's, it's our grandma. Your grandma. Annette, yeah, our grandma. But she's her mom to us. And, and where did you grow up? We moved to Clearwater Beach, Florida, of our grandmother. She was really like our stability, our foundation. When my grandfather passed away of cancer, he had left her in a mountain of debt. So we ended up having to move off of Clearwater Beach and into a trailer park in for Florida four for four years. So clearly you can see these girls coming from poverty, like in the music industry and entertainment industry, even in the sports field, people that come from poverty just want to come out. They just want to have a better life. And everything that is glittering and glamour seems like a promising life. So I don't mind these girls, you know, striving their best. As far as I know, they went on ahead and became models. They were striving to become to become models and they worked at a local restaurant where you know they were short dresses just like hooters and um i think they found a contact that would help them you know to promote their modeling lifestyle just to get out of poverty but as i said they came from their grandma who was a so-called caretaker their grandpa left them with that which is more pressure on these young girls to find a way to make money So let's go with the second video. Much fans, yeah. We loved Kendra, almost identified with her. She was the younger one. She, she was liked more rap, like hip hop, like you know, us. we like rap music. This is interesting because the fan base was young women. We knew there would be some interest because it was the Playboy Mansion. We wanted to have their boobs. We wanted to, like, we were dirty blonde naturally. We wanted to have platinum oh, hair. Yeah. We saw the Playboy Mansion. I'm like, it just looks like heaven it's like your royalty there mm -hmm. and Hef looks so nice you viewed the mansion as an adult disneyland yes, yes exactly yeah did you ever adult think disneyland that is you the world would end up on girls next door no not at all we just wanted to be models but um when we were watching the girls next door and we were modeling for wing house the photographer's like hey i know how to get girls into playboy and like do a photo shoot and, and do a photo shoot and submit your photos how old were you 17 17, 17 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sent to playboy yeah. correct yeah Under do you remember the first time that you posed for playboy we were flown out to miami for a test shoot we had just turned 18 mm -hmm. and um it was tasteful that was actually the first time that i looked at a you know, a monitor and seeing that we're actually beautiful. I've never had 
you know, hair professional and hair and makeup and all that. And it's like, oh my gosh, we are gorgeous. <laughs> what happens next? How do you actually get out to... So these girls finally found out through photo shoot and whatsoever that they're beautiful, that they're desirable. And of course, you know, they get monetized. In life, there are people that will come and give you a hand to give you opportunities and you should take it. But always think twice, as MJ would say, always think twice. You never know where that decision could lead you. Now, they got the fame, they got the life with you, Hefner, but the price was to do certain things that we we finna find out what it was. So let's continue. The mansion. Halfway through the, through the tunnel, and that's one thing that Hef was a genius at, was his image. You thought it was fake. Mm -hmm. You didn't think that he was really sleeping with these young girls. Hell no, you don't think an 80 year old man is sleeping with three of these women. Did it uh, occur to you at some point that the girls had boyfriends? I actually thought that Holly, since she was the main girlfriend, I thought that she, you know, sidekick. For Kendra, you can totally tell that she had a date on the side. Was it starting to occur to you that these three women they didn't know were on that their they way had to out sleep the with him? Like a lot of people are on a comment session where like, girlfriends. how the hell we do you expect him not to okay, sleep so then with from these there, young, beautiful you go women? Home, and then what happened? <laughs> yeah, so Hef wrote a letter, old school. And he said, I would love for you guys to be my girlfriends and to move in with. I would love for you guys to be my girlfriends. He hasn't even met you and he already wants you to be his girlfriend. Mm hmm. I think the rest of the girls were just like bunnies and just there for decoration and enjoying their life in the mansion and drinking and partying but the other ones were the one he was seen out with were the main girls and there's also one part in the interview where he said where they say that when holly had her short haircut out of the blue he got really mad he was very condescending he said she looked old and cheap and i remember that that I actually thought it suit, suited her, but it seemed like he really went bananas showing how controlling and important his image is. And of course, he dates his women for their youthfulness, but mainly for their blonde hair. So he was the opinion she had better kept it long. So yeah. But let's continue and see what these girls have to say even more. Really like, hazy and just like really the most inebriated we've ever been. We were wasted. So when we got back, we're smoking pot, taking pills, and just, we're just gone. So that night when we did get back to his room, we put on the pajamas and all that, you know? Um, I just remember me being on one side of him, Carissa being on the other side of him, so, so that we would give him oral sex. And that was our 19th birthday. Wow. You're never going to forget that. Wow. That's... Wow. We had never Speaking done a threesome of... together before. We would never want to. It's so creepy. He didn't, he didn't even finish. Just imagine hey. this. Just imagine it. his old hand, and it kind of shakes, touching a boob. It's gross. It's like you're having sex with your grandpa. And he laid there looking up, and he was like, my babies, my babies, see, you love me. We were watching the clock next to his bed, and it was like 4 a.m., 5 a.m., and we're waiting for the A lot of girls were like, and but like, you already kissed red, him, so you already spent time to, with like, him. Sterilize. What is, you know, having to sleep wow. with him makes a difference? I'm so After shocked. That, I, I didn't feel like my body was day. mine anymore. Like, I felt used, disgusted. Yeah, like, I didn't want to, you know, call my mom and, and tell on. her anything you know? both of us said he's going straight to hell oh we both like he's the devil this is insane we were disgusted with ourselves i don't know maybe the devil's cousin why did you feel like you had to do it coming from our abusive father and our biological mom leaving we really felt like we had to take care of our grandmother who raised us and old 
There was no going back. You couldn't, we couldn't leave. I believe that Hef would prey on the younger girls like us who came from a bad background. Of course. The girls who were not all so men with money do that. They promised them like, oh, here's this beautiful castle and you know, I have all these surgeons and he can make them beautiful or give them an option to do Playboy or like provide this Playboy family. Selling your, yourself you. and your youth to him. Did it image. occur to you that he was grooming you? Yeah, for sure. That's I think that's how he does it. Because we were only 18, turned 19. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. He really is grooming us completely. Everything's yes. You like get to eat what you want. The butlers are calling you. You can have alcohol on a platter. I'm like, oh, Patron and pineapple. Hell yeah. When we moved in, we got media training. I want to talk about that for a second. Mm -hmm. What is media training? What did you understand it to be? They would just explain to us, you know, how to um, answer certain questions and how to dodge certain questions. Of course, you do that girlfriends. Up, like the sister question. What is the sister question? Well, a lot of people would say we were incest because we were both Ow. grooming you on. First of all, there's this level up thing and dating thing where you're like, oh, you're dating all the men and it's cool. Like, do whatever you want if you have your husband that is older than you. But I think the younger you are and less experienced you are, the easier a man with more experience will try to prey on you. And a lot of people do that. Even There are even women who do that. They prey on young boys and you know, whatever. Men and women prey on young people. And... You have to protect your mind and in this case i think they were aware that they were being used and i think they realized it slowly especially when they say they arrived to the mansion and holly wasn't as you know glamorously happy and everything as she was in the series that's because behind the scenes you see like cardi b who also said like when she got to Hollywood, so many people were lying. So many people weren't the way she thought they were, that she looked up to them. They were condescending. And I completely agree with that. A lot of people that are in Hollywood or, you know, that are very famous are not as nice as we would think, right? But I do believe that definitely that these girls were exploited. But I think it's, yes, like you come from poverty, you don't know where to go with your life. And of course, you're like the next best option. And they were pretty and pretty sales, like sales, everything sells that, you know, is good to the eye. But I do think that a lot of girls um, think that it's going to change their life. And, you know, when he's like, you can have my mansion and you can have butlers and you can have, you know, the photographers, it's, you're not happy with that because you have to share this man. He's old, but you have to mention, you have the butlers, you have security, and you can just take pictures of yourself and you party and drink. But after a while, you're like, oh, what am I doing with my life? And I think they reached that point. Um, and then I think one part is saying that they were drunk every night just to cope with it. And that's very sad. That's very, very sad. But yeah, let's continue with the last part stayed over uh around midnight at the parties he'd say oh well you know i'm getting tired let's go upstairs and we kind of noticed the pattern after a while it was like midnight he really always wants to go upstairs and a bunch of girls would just be begging to we don't mind go ahead do what he wants clearly the so girls be new they with didn't those girls, he won't want us so we, we just uh, did not want any part of that but um the problem was is Hef doesn't like to use protection. So for the butlers we just order like a bowl, big bowl and we put hot water in it and we put rags in it so whoever was you know having intercourse with them when they were finished they can wipe him off and then the other girl and could do it, do it. And so you had to take it upon yourself yeah. to try there was at one point an STD that went around. We caught chlamydia. And um, I remember going down to Mary O'Connor's office, his assistant slash I'd say house mom for us. 
And uh, she's like, well, that's what happens when you're sexually active. We freaked out. When she said it, CDs are normal when you're sexually active, we were like, everyone's out of their mind here. What the hell? Well, this whole thing is, is terrifying, I'm sure, for, yeah. for 19 year old women. Are you still intimate with him during this stage? After we caught the STD, we said we would never had sex with him again. That was it. That was it. Mm -hmm. Wow. From what I understand, there were rules that you wow. had to live by mm -hmm. when you were uh, on That's the show crazy. and you lived at the mansion. Mm -hmm. What were some of the rules? The rules were we had a nine o'clock curfew. We weren't allowed nine to be seen out with other men couldn't date other men. He told us if we loved him and we, we wanted to be his girlfriends, then we had to have sexual encounters with him. So he turned it into proof of love. Proof yeah. of love, exactly. Hmm. Right. It would make me so angry how manipulative he was. And are there rules like, can you have boyfriends at all? You're not allowed Half to. Half is our boyfriend. How so. do you know when you... <sighs> Guys. I have to sip water. Whew. I don't know about you, but I'm quite taken aback. And this is the second time I watched this. So, this man is basically living his own life. He has all these beautiful women surrounding him from his young age to his old age. I think it started with one girlfriend. I'll try and cover that one with the first girlfriend and then she couldn't take the cheating and then she left and all the other women came and it started to become a harem that it is today. And nowadays young beautiful girls just want to be models and just want to be desirable and blonde and you can have all this lifestyle. It's just marketing as Drake said. Drake said it himself, marketing is everything everything and i think that's basically what has been sold to these girls is a life um, a lifestyle a dream and he's the sole beneficiary you can have your own platform you can have your own um you know i don't know if you can have your own business if you have to give some certain rights but i do know that you have to make sure i think kendra is the only one that married well after that but i think she just used it as a come up and they do look different nowadays, actually. Um, a lot of people are also talking about the twins' weight gain, how big they got, and um, from doing some research, I just think they're feel beautiful in the skin right now. But I also believe that maybe it could be like you know dealing with all the trauma and a lot of people that have trauma and emotional probably they do the emotional eating, they gain weight. It could also be the pandemic. We don't know. Um, but I do think um, they went through some things and sometimes certain medications can make you get bigger. So we don't know the background story. I haven't found anything on that. But a lot of people were surprised on how even I was surprised, you know, how slim they were. And I think these two women are right now 33. So they're still young or young adults. And they're in their early 30s and, you know, from 19 where you saw them having, you know, a little bit more weight compared to the 17 year old pictures. They did gain some weight, but it could be trauma. I, I do believe it's trauma because so many people gain weight through trauma, stress, um, coping with different things in their life. And the food is just a comfort, right? So, but I think it was a very interesting documentary because even I watched The Girl Next Door and these bubble heads intro and everything. I thought it was a really good lifestyle. I think it's a beautiful lifestyle. Um, and it's completely devastating. And the fact that they didn't believe that they have to sleep with him. Some people don't believe it because they were like, it's obvious. Duh, what would he else do? But some might say, yeah, but he's older. You would not expect him to have that you know, to have that kind of energy, but <laughs> there are certain medications that I'm not going to call, but the name that can help you with your potency. And I think maybe that's what he has used. I don't know. I think it's just gross. And um, ah, the thing with midnight, I don't know. I don't want to put anything out here, but some people might say it's a ritual. It's being a ritualist. And because the midnight thing you have that in churches, 
where they say pray midnight and the Bible says midnight and he does it with midnight. Some rituals or, or you know, in the, in the dark magic world, they would say midnight has always something to do with that. But let me know in the comment section if you have any idea what this means. But yeah, I'm very devastated and I'll continue to do this kind of content. Don't forget to share, subscribe, and also like my video if you like this content. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.